Thank you for joining us for episode four. And today I have a co-host, Darnell Evans. He will be joining us. And Darnell was a guy that、uh, did the every forty seconds video challenge. And in case you wonder, you know where you've seen him from. So today's episode, we're actually going to be talking about grooming and how grooming works. But before Darnell and I jump onto that, I wanted to share this video. In the online world, predators use the same tactic, and it's what we call grooming, or law enforcement calls grooming. They build a relationship. They try to understand what they care about. They give them compliments. Sometimes they'll even send presents or say nice things, and eventually.、Um, A teen will start feeling, having feelings for a predator, and it's at that point where the danger begins. The grooming behavior that we have seen can take months, or it can take a very short amount of time, depending on the offender. And little by little, the conversation will turn off into a very sexual nature, and they'll start to talk to the child about what their interests are, and they'll try to find out、uh, what the child's interests are, and and. Often、uh, they will get the child to say things that the child couldn't even imagine、uh, talking about, and sometimes children will talk about things that they don't even know what they mean because they're clearly very adult sexual conversations. They are inundated with sexual images and sexual conversation that allow them to very freely participate in those types of conversations and activities. Typically, I would just start by asking for a regular picture, and then if it got to that level, I would eventually ask for a, a picture of more of a sexual nature. Grooming is really easy to understand once you give thought to it. Every everybody wants to feel loved, and these people online are willing to make you feel that way. And you know, it never occurs to you that the person that you're talking to may be a monster. And they do it in the most subtle ways. You know, you get in a fight with a friend. Your friend called you that. Oh my gosh! Why would your friend ever call you that? That's not a friend. I'm your real friend. I would never say anything like that. And they pull you away from everything around you. You know, all your friends and your family and your teachers. And as you're getting pulled away, you're getting closer to him. One of the the devices that these predators use in the interactions with kids. Is sending them explicit photos of themselves.、Uh, what they're trying to do is sort of deaden the nerve endings. They're trying to beat down、uh, the resistance. It's part of the grooming process to normalize、uh, what they're trying to do, and and it's it's pretty insidious. As you can see from the video, they show different. Types of grooming, but one of the things I want to touch on that I felt that was important、um, about two years ago, I was on a radio show called The After Party. It was here in Dallas, and one of the moms she asked me. She said, "I want you to teach me how they will groom my child." And I actually told her, "I said, no, let me teach you how they groom the parent before they get to the child." And that's the one thing that a lot of parents are not aware of, especially with the cases like the、um, the Sandusky case, the Catholic priest、uh, that are sexually abusing children, coaches, teachers, pastors.、Um, these are things. These are type of grooming that they go to the parents first before they get to the child. And so, when you think about grooming, what are your thoughts? Well, Kim, when I think about grooming, necessarily. Could be anyone from teacher or a so-called friend, anybody who's, I guess, pinpoints their prey. Maybe they might have a 
problems going on at home, can't look to anybody else to talk to, and that's the perfect victim, somebody who's very vulnerable. And that could be anyone close to you or anybody who's just watching in the distance waiting to pounce. One of the things that um, we're going to go over, how a parent is groomed by a predator in order to get to their child. So with that, so let's say you're a dad, and let's say you have a three-year-old daughter. So how I would groom you is I would bump into you, let's say you're taking your daughter at the mall. I'm noticing you're a single parent. I don't see another person near you. Or even if you are with uh, someone, let's say the mom. But one of the things that I want to do is I want to make you think of me as an exemplary person. So I'll be friends with you guys. I'll say, hey, guess what? Um, I'm a car salesman, and I'll give you and your wife a card. And so you're looking, and you're, you're saying something like, you know what, I've been wanting to look at a newer car, but, you know, maybe it's not. Well, you know what, why don't we just have lunch and just discuss? Your wife is welcome, and so is your little child. And so we all meet up at a restaurant. We're gaining a rapport. Does that make sense? Yes. And so by getting that rapport, one of the things I'm going to do is also develop a friendship. I'll be buying gifts. I'll be, I hear that you guys are looking for, let's say that your wife is wanting a new laptop. All of a sudden, you get in the mail from me a, a MacBook. And MacBooks are not cheap. No, nope, pretty pricey, I'd say. Exactly. So I would get a MacBook. Your wife is thrilled. And then I said, hey, and then you asked me, you know, thank you for the gift, but you didn't really have to. No, I believe in helping people out. I want to do this for the kindness of my heart. So you're thinking I'm really genuine. So then we go out to parties. We start to become really good friends. And then one night I tell you, hey, you know what? Um, why don't we go, all go out and you say, you know what? I didn't get a babysitter. Not a problem. You know what? I'll contact one of my girls and she can babysit your kid. But you trust me to find the right person. So I have you meet this teenage girl. She seems everything okay. All her references check out. But what little did you know is that I brought her in to spy on the inside of your home. What is your schedule? So that way she's in your home. She's looking at your schedule. She's looking at your stuff in your home. And then on top of that, she reports back to me. She'll tell me what the little girl likes and don't like. What's her favorite food? What she's allergic to? And then it just slowly grows from there. Little did you know is that one day I have, I have a target on your child to be abducted. But then I'm the go-to friend that you're going to run to and say, my daughter went missing. Oh, let me help you. So that's one form of grooming. The other form of grooming is also with teachers and faculty. They're at your, they're at your school. So let's say your daughter is eight. So your daughter is eight. So I'm going to groom your daughter as a teacher. I noticed that she's struggling with math. So then I'll ask the parent, can she stay after school so I can tutor her? But it's just me and her. And you're thinking, well, she's a female teacher. I'd rather feel safe with a female teacher than a male teacher. Even female predators exist. But so. even male predators exist. So one of the key things that you want to do when it comes to your kids going to school, going to churches, going to any activity that involves adult and even peers, and we'll get to the peers in just a moment, so when it comes to other adults, you have to have communication with your kids. That's the most important part. If you say, you know what, I don't want you hanging out with that person anymore when you, once you find out that danger, guess what? The groomer has already prepared and brainwashed your child that you would say something like that. So instead of saying, well, I don't want my child hanging out with that teacher before they are convicted or before they're alleged, what you can do in order to get proof is start talking to your child and teaching your child and equip, equipping your child what to look for. What are the red flags? Not to keep secrets. What gifts did they buy them? So let's say your daughter says, hey, the teacher got me an Apple Watch, but you never saw it on her arm. Well, instead of saying, you know what? I don't want you to keep that Apple Watch. 
what I want you to do, what the parents should do is saying, hey, I would like to thank the adult that bought, bought you that Apple Watch. That way you can go to that adult and say, excuse me, my child and I have a very strong relationship. There's nothing you can say or do or buy my child's silence out. And this is a warning. I want you to stay away from my, my child. But get as much information as you can. Contact the FBI or the local police in a child sex trafficking unit, not just a random police department. And then you can also call the 1-800 Human Trafficking Hotline, contact a local counselor, and intervene with your child. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is online scams. How online scams with a single adult or female can be groomed by their own peers. So let's say that um, you're going on Tinder and you're looking for someone just to chat with. And then this guy tells you that, you know, he's going through a hardship. He's in the middle of a divorce and his wife took him for everything. He starts building a rapport with you. You start to feel sorry. Then little by little, he'll say, you know what? I can't meet my car broke down. I need some money. That's another form of scam. They try to get you in and get you to give money because of certain situations. The other type of grooming is when a teen to teen peer grooming. There are two girls that are hanging out at recess. One of the girls will say, hey, you want to come over to my house and meet my daddy? And her daddy is not a biological figure, or he may be. But one of the things is you want to understand, and I tell this to parents, get to know your kids' friends and their parents. Just because a parent is, um, what do they call it, not chauffeur. Um, Guardian? Not guardian. Um, they'll say the parents are chaperoning. Okay. Yep. They're chaperoning. You still want to vet out the parents. One of the things my uncle used to say is trust but verify. That's the most important thing. And I think that we all need to do that. Now, one of the things I will be talking about in our future uh, podcast, because I get a lot of parents that says, I don't know how to navigate the apps. I don't know how to understand social media. I will be doing a workshop if you're interested, and I'll be broadcasting it on the uh, podcast so parents can sign up for the workshop. And we can meet at a certain location. We can do a webinar. So that way I can teach you what to look for. But be sure to um, not just investigate, but also learn about these apps. Learn privacy settings. Learn, do you know now on Facebook, um, they now have what's called private chats, meaning anytime the other person logs off, <clears throat> the chat is no longer there. So that's something you want to look into because now Facebook has it. Just like with Snapchat, when you send each other a message and when you both log off, when you log back in, it's empty. Facebook now has that in their messenger. Is, so, this, like, um, is this like something like the stories where you, you know, it disappears after 24 hours so there's no trace of it? No, it's actually in the messenger. Right. In the Facebook messenger. So it, it is something similar to that because once, so let's say I'm sending you a messenger and I sent you a picture of me in a bikini. So once you sign off, and let's say you show to your girlfriend, like, Chong was hitting on me. She sent me a bikini. Guess what? That picture's gone. There's no proof. Throwing away all the evidence, pretty much. Especially when it comes to kids using social media, that's the most important thing. If you feel threatened and someone sent you a message through the private messenger, be sure to take a screenshot before you log off. That's another thing. Um, the other thing that I want to um, also share, did you have anything that you want to chime in about the uh, grooming before we move on to the next? You pretty much summed it all up more than I could have, but basically just keep an eye open. And if, it's, if someone is being that nice to you, I'm not saying that there's not nice people, but it's maybe because they have some other ulterior motives. Everybody always wants something in return, no matter how nice they are. It just depends on the person and depends on the situation. And the other thing is, um, there are people that are genuinely nice and they care. 
but here's the telltale sign. People who genuinely care or genuinely care, they're not going to ask for a payback. They're not going to say, hey, I did this for you, so you need to do this for me. That's a red flag. So a lot of times when kids accept big gifts, like an Apple Watch or an iPad or things like that, <clears throat> nine times out of ten, the predator will say, okay, are you big enough or are you adult enough to handle something? Of course, the kid will always say, yeah. Well, then they'll send a naked picture. They'll send a body part. And if the kid says, I'm sorry, but, or the adult or the peer may say, now it's your turn. You need to show me a body part. And nine times out of ten, the kid will say, well, I'm not comfortable, but I sent you mine. I got you an iPad. I got you an Apple Watch. That's another telltale sign. And tell your kids when they are stuck in that type of conversation, they don't have to oblige to anything. Teach the kid that once they are in that conversation to write the person's name down, their screen name, everything that they need to know about the perp. So that way, and then contact whatever app that you're using, whether it's social media, whether it's, um, what is that, Tinder, contact the helpline and yes, say, they hey. they have dedicated services for that. So that's, that's a good tip, yes. Awesome. So what we're going to do is... Um, there's also more information. You can go on my website. You can send me um, comments about uh, grooming. You can also learn about um, how you can bring me on as a consultant or teaching a class about grooming if you want to learn more. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the Every 40 Seconds campaign that we've been doing and also launching our GoFundMe. We've reached over $1,000 on our 35K. We still have more to go. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. <laughs> My mic was off. I'm sorry, everyone. It's amazing. Good. Well done. So, um, and then I want to also share a website. It's called www.barkus slash blog slash grooming signs sexual predators. It's an additional website to talk about different type of grooming, how you can prepare yourself, how you can train yourself. And then, um, last but not least, the Human Trafficking Hotline. The number is 1-888-373-7888. There's also the website, and also Missing and Exploited Children's website is also available. And if at any time you feel endangered, please call 911. And um, if you want to um, donate or you want to invest in our pre-production for the TV series every 40 seconds, be sure to contact me on my website or my email at chong at imchongkim.com. Darnell, do you have anything you want to share? Mm, at the moment, no. It's just that I'm, I'm honored that Miss Kim has also selected me to play one of the roles. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying that. Is, 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 is that okay? <laughs> <clears throat> my role is going to be uh, Keenan Gold Bach. Bach. Okay, Bach, I'm making sure I said that right because she said I would get a lot of people angry if I said it the wrong way. I did a couple times. It took me a while. But other than that, I'll look forward to everyone's help. Everything, anything helps. You can either do the challenge, donate the $40, just show your support. Help save the children and please be aware and look around. There's, sure. there's many ways. The remind us the the hashtag that people need to use for uh, for being part and being screened for the uh, for the show. Um, it's hashtag every forty seconds campaign. The campaign needs to be behind every forty seconds, otherwise that hashtag will be mixed with the suicide awareness. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we want to, to to find the good the good specific ones. Yes. All right. Well, Chong, um, I think we had some some. Uh, let me just put my camera on again. So we had some people on the section on the comment section saying that how important this, infor this information is. Um, I would just like to ask you just before we go, um, what is the most asked question uh, from parents? Most asked questions I get from parents is, I don't understand social media. I don't understand the apps. I don't understand how to navigate them. What are the privacy settings? And also the other part is how I don't know how to talk to my kid. My daughter's not talk to, talking to me. My son's not talking to me. 
One of the things that I would highly suggest is spend at least once a week with your child. Get to know them because guess what? If you're not getting to know your kid, somebody else is. And that someone is not always a healthy um Influence, right? Influence, yeah. yes. So it's pretty Ten much time. like a... Safe um, influence, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, if your kid is going to the playground and you want to know, you know, who he's talking to, and then same thing with the internet. You want to know who they're talking to online. Exactly. And you also want to um, ask appropriate questions when you're interviewing a babysitter mm -hmm. or anyone who's taking care of your child. One of the key things I would always ask to anyone that loves that claims to love children, mm -hmm. why do they love children? Give me an example of a time with you and your child. If it sounds romanticism, that's a red flag. And you can actually say, you know what, I'm not comfortable in hiring that person. You don't have to tell them to their face if you don't want to. You don't have to call them back and just send them an email saying thank you for your uh, cooperation. We found someone else. And just leave it at that. But always follow your gut feeling. If something doesn't feel right, no matter how trivial it is, follow that gut feeling. But the most important thing is learn how to talk to your kids. And I give workshops on that because I can't really explain it in a, in during the podcast, but I'll give some tips on the, um, the next podcast when we talk about uh, social media and how to talk to your kids. Awesome. All right. Well, closing, closing remarks. Um, the only thing I can say is um, go to my website, check out all the resources on our website, and also the human trafficking hotline. And my website, nor am I, are a social service agency. I get emails that people want my help. <laughs> That's and, interesting. And I, I'm glad that you feel confident in having me in, but I don't have the time. But if you tell me what city and state you're located, I can help you find the resources that are local to you. Thank you so much for episode four, and meet us back here on episode five with Jeff Davis. Thank you. <laughs>